Is what, dude? Answer XQC is trying to chat with you with what? All right, let's see what the fuck. Uh, fuck this Hello. one. Let's see what Steven Crowder has to says, say. Okay, I came over here because YouTube was being. Uh, you know, they were I love this. I, okay, so watch what Steven Crowder is gonna say about this. Okay, so. My my best my favorite thing is like all the you know all the people who just like love Joe Rogan <laughs> coming out to just fucking defend Joe Rogan uh, unconditionally no matter what the fuck happens. Let's see let's see what happens. I mean I I, I suspect he's gonna say, wow a guy apologizes for like getting some stuff wrong even though he's not getting anything wrong really is actually some completely right. censoring me too much the premise was that spotify would be free and open they wouldn't bother me and tell me what to say now it's becoming too constraining now it's too much of a headache i'm gonna walk and go do my own thing somewhere else sue me you're playing with fire spotify this is the disconnect between the woke Thank companies you, yeah. who pull the strings and the woke people who work in your offices and the people who listen to spotify <laughs> Okay, speaking of the pits, Spotify, this is a big controversy right now, and it shouldn't be a controversy. That's pretty funny, dude. Yo, I wish, I wish you did this before because I already ran the ad break, but that's pretty good. God damn, dude. Chatters are fucking blasting off today. I respect you. Good job, chatter. Never seen this episode of Arthur. Y'all funny as fuck. Diversity at all. I'll give you my opinion on what, what I would like to see happen with Joe Rogan. But, yeah. um, you know, Neil Young last week threatened, uh, he said he was pulling his stuff from Spotify because of Joe Rogan's podcast. Joni Mitchell joined Neil Young, removing her music from Spotify, uh, saying uh, that they are irresponsible people. Uh, sorry, irresponsible people on Spotify are spreading lies that are costing people their lives. And then Barry Manilow also followed suit and Spotify stock shut up 9,000%. So that was... Them. <laughs> wow. Next Who up, knew? share. Oh, but no. a bit of an anchor. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> I hope Gordon Lightfoot does it. Was he dead? <laughs> <laughs> Funny also, out who loud. owns... Who? Uh, oh, we're gonna get into that. Never mind. We're gonna get yeah, yeah. no. We get into that. That's that's what's interesting about Spotify and who owns a share of Warner Music and Spotify. Yeah. But um, first, Joe Rogan responded to Spotify announcing they announced yeah. that they are going to label, and this is just so silly now. Label certain content to be man. sensitive that it might. Well, what is their official label? Do we know what it is? What the Spotify label is? Someone kind of bring a it up. Warning. Yeah, we'll have to bring it's it. It's a warning because God forbid adults actually are able to watch somebody with whom they disagree, right? We dude, 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 dude. What the fuck? That's not it. There's plenty of fucking diversity of ideas on Spotify and a million different goddamn pla uh, podcasts, bro. Why? Why do they always have to do this? Why? It's like, oh, dude, God forbid people watch something that they disagree with. Like, no, that's not it, dude. That's just Spotify not taking Joe Rogan's episodes off the platform and instead just slapping a warning issue a warning label on it is for the benefit of people like you. So you can continue spreading misinformation. You fucking idiot. That's what it's, that's what it's for. And he knows this too. He's like, Oh, I don't even want a fucking label on it. It's literally a, yeah, it's a parental advisory sticker. Okay. It doesn't stop anything. You need to right, now yeah. warn adults. Remember back when it was Tipper Gore and it was video games. They started self-regulating saying E for everyone. And, you know, okay, Duke Nukem. All right. We'll put a 17 plus on there. There are strippers and nukes. So, okay. <laughs> but right now we're talking about adults needing to be. Spotify said it deleted 20,000 podcast episode. It believed we're spreading misinformation about COVID-19, including 40 episodes of JRE 40. Wait, they deleted 40 episodes of JRE? That's crazy. He warned because they might hear a differing opinion. So Spotify said they were going to slap a warning label on these kinds of uh, podcasts and uh, like Joe Rogan. And uh, Joe Rogan responded uh, to this and discussing uh, COVID-19 and the reaction. I think there's a lot of people that have a distorted perception of what I do, maybe based on sound bites or based on headlines of articles that are disparaging. Um, the podcast has been accused of spreading dangerous misinformation, dangerous. specifically about two. We are 
already saw all this. We're not watching all that. Well, you know, he just that's just conjecture. Well, sure it right. means that instead of the vaccine being able, excuse me, it means for instead of the virus being able to hop from person to person to person to person, spreading and spreading, sickening some of them, but not all of them. And the ones that it doesn't sicken don't know they have it. And then they give it to even more people because they didn't recognize they were right. Instead of the virus being able to hop from person to person to person, potentially mutating and becoming more virulent and drug resistant along the way. Now we know that the vaccines work well enough that the virus stops with mm. every vaccinated person. A vaccinated person gets exposed to the virus. The virus does not infect them. The virus cannot then use that person to go anywhere else. It cannot use a vaccinated person as a ho This is in March 2019. Oh, wait, what the fuck? No, no shot. Wait, is this for real? Wait. Oh, yeah, this is like right when the vaccines first came out. Yeah, this is right when the fucking vaccines first came out. This is before the Delta variant. I can't believe I'm about to fucking I cannot believe I'm about to defend Rachel Maddow. But. For the record here. The pre Delta variant. Cases for breakthrough were incredibly fucking low. Okay? Like, incredibly low. The only way to, to massage this fucking uh, argument better is all she had to say was, it is incredibly unlikely for someone who is vaccinated to get fucking uh, uh, COVID and give it to other people. And she was wrong. She's wrong. She was wrong. Especially with the Delta variant which we know led to plenty of breakthrough cases. But even with the Alpha variant, there was a likelihood, like a very, very low likelihood. But she even mentions the likelihood of mutations. So I don't know why the fuck... Nah, there's no way of defending that. It's she goof. But that's fucking idiotic. It's idiotic, okay? It's idiotic to look at this and go... Oh, dude, we got him. It's March 29th, 2021. Vaccines have first come out. The efficacy is incredibly high for the Alpha variant, okay? Uh, to, to not get the Alpha variant and to not spread the Alpha variant. The only way that this would have been, the only way that this would have been 100% true is if she said, there's still a likelihood, albeit an incredibly slim one. Okay? This is immediately after the vaccines are mass distributed. This is the clip Jimmy Dore uses all the time to accuse Democrats of a conspiracy. Yeah, you're a fucking idiot if you think that this isn't, uh, uh, this is like enough to be like, that's it. This is largely what you mentioned earlier. The scientists never said that you 100% can't get infected now, but the media did a poor job translating that. Yes. We in the media... And even scientific communicators didn't do a great job of communicating this. But it doesn't really matter, ultimately, because, like, uh, that is not one of those areas where I, I think the media or the scientific community is fucked up. Okay? The FDA didn't approve the vaccine until August 2021. No, this is, like, no, this is already emergency use authorization, the real Dusty. That's what this is. This is, like... Emergency use authorization. The vaccines are starting to, uh, to be distributed. People have already started taking the vaccine. That's when uh, she said this. Host to go get more people. That means the vaccines will get us to the end of this. Now, I and I, at the time, there was... No consensus on whether or not we could reach herd immunity. Because I even remember at the time, the daily, okay? The daily straight up saying, some scientists believe we could reach herd immunity at 60%. Some scientists believe we could reach herd immunity at 70%. And some scientists do not believe we can reach herd immunity at all, given the concept of new variants that could be more deadly or more transmissible. You 
want to take a minute to talk about something you know that that little boy was addressing. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> a couple of things here. <laughs> when they say dangerous and misinformation, let's analyze this both. Dangerous and misinformation. Misinformation means that the information generally speaking, is not only false, but knowingly false uh, misinformation, right? Certainly that's how it's been labeled uh, here over the last several years with COVID. Okay, now dangerous. Dangerous would imply what? That it causes damage to people. Now, let me give you one side that's been labeled misinformation and dangerous. And this is important. Just stay with me here really quickly. By the way, I, I mean, here's the thing. If you're still going to Steven Crowder for information about COVID when he's gotten dunked over and over again, like he's been put in the fucking dunk tank numerous times. Like, this is a guy, remember, who kept claiming that the COVID fatality numbers were false. I remember because I cover him. Most people have already forgotten this. But Steven Crowder, in 2020, would do change my mind segments in the middle of fucking COVID, where he would go out in public and would literally say, the COVID fatalities are a lie. Something that is so easy to fucking destroy, okay? Like, so easy, so easily destroyed. The argument that is so laughably wrong, okay? The argument that uh, the, the, the COVID fatality numbers were greatly exaggerated. An argument that he's kind of moved away from. All you need to do in that situation is look to the fucking excess deaths. Look at the excess deaths. Why are there excess deaths that uh, perfectly align with uh, COVID fatalities then? Why are people dying? Joe Rogan and ourselves. So, for example, Peter McCullough, we had on the show, okay? Yeah. Uh, long before uh, Joe Rogan, I think we were the first people to, 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 to have him on. What did we say? We said people who want to get vaccinated should uh, get vaccinated. People who are vulnerable, who are immunocompromised, it, ma it makes sense. People who are elderly, it makes sense. Uh, that being said, we don't know the efficacy of the vaccines yet. And it doesn't seem as though, for example... What we would say is doesn't seem like it stops transmission entirely, but it seems like it lowers hospitalizations. Also, we don't know the long term side effects. That's a fact. OK, that's considered misinformation and dangerous. Who does that hurt? What they claim is it could hurt somebody because maybe somebody won't get vaccinated. OK. Here's the thing. There's a difference between that encouraging someone to be skeptical off the bat and instilling which is what Fauci, what you just saw Rachel Maddow do, what all of media did, all of mainstream media, all of uh, the big tech companies. How is this guy claiming that he was ever correct about any part of the fucking misinformation and conspiracies that he spread throughout the entire duration of the pandemic, turning around and being like, well, we got him, boys, pack it up. Rachel Maddow was wrong. She said that you 100% could not get COVID back in fucking March. I wonder how many times Rachel Maddow has done coverage showing. Let's take a look. I fucking hate Rachel Maddow, too. I cannot believe I'm defending her right now. Jesus Christ, I hate this. I hate this. This is like hurting my fucking very soul, my very being, my existence, okay? Let's take a look at Rachel Maddow's breakthrough cases coverage. Let's Google Rachel Maddow breakthroughs. Okay. Talked about it on the December 23rd. Talked about it on July uh, 29th. Talked about on MSNBC. U.S. Surgeon General explains how to reduce breakthrough cases. July 19th. Ooh, as early as July 29th. Interesting. Interesting. The Washington Post has obtained internal CDC documents that says the Delta variant of COVID-19 not only spreads much more easily than other variants, but may cause more severe illness as well. Um, let's see. All in with uh, Rachel Maddow show starts with Ali Velshi. Let's see. But the CDC still has not made this data public. Here's one slide from the CDC presentation published by The Post tonight. It summarizes the finding of the Delta variants this way. Quote, Delta is different from previous strains. Highly contagious, likely more severe. Breakthrough infections may be as transmissible as unvaccinated cases. Wow. Wow. That's fucking crazy. So, so it turns out you know, when new information came out, Rachel Maddow did not continue to lie like Steven Crowder does.
a new variant came out that led to breakthrough cases and mainstream media reported on it. This is no different than how uh, uh, the, the fucking dickhead Michael Knowles, when I was debating him, kept bringing up the CDC's like early uh, claims about mask wearing, okay, to claim you should not wear a mask at all, that we should be anti-maskers across the board. No masks. The CDC was wrong, and then they, you know, went back on that and fucking, you know, communicated it, which was a gigantic issue, in my opinion, for the CDC, which is supposed to, you know, disseminate information to the public in the most accurate way possible, in the most clear way possible. That's how they operate as a, uh, a public safety, uh, as a public health uh, institution. And yet, for some fucking weird reason, you know, they were still operating on the old stuff. Kind of weird. A false sense of confidence. They told you, you get vaccinated, you can't get sick. They told you, you get vaccinated, you can't spread it. So the vaccinated could go to Thanksgiving parties. The vaccinated could go out publicly. The point is, that was untrue. And that could actually spread the virus because people have a false sense of security. What's more damaging? Yeah, except that's not what happened. There was a brief... First of all, that's not what they said. Even the fucking video you're showing yourself is operating on old data. Okay? There is no reason to fucking defend this. It's wrong. Okay? It's wrong because it was marginally incorrect. It's wrong on the margins that the alpha variant you could still get, but it was incredibly unlikely. But other than that, the Delta variant was the one that was actually uh, capable of penetrating through the fucking COVID vaccine and creating breakthrough cases. But even in that circumstance, even in that circumstance, the likelihood that you would get it and spread it was still lower. Telling your son to avoid scenarios where he may be bullied or telling your son who you know will get his ass kicked that he is invincible. So we should walk right up to that bully and tell him to stop. Then he gets his ass kicked. The point is a false sense of security, which is what has been given to people, is far more dangerous and is harmed. Wait, what the fuck? False sense of security? Dog, this is an internal contradiction. If COVID is capable of being damaging and scary and spreading and killing people, okay, then how the fuck, how in the ever-loving fuck could you ever fucking advocate against ma uh, masks and mandates and lockdowns? C Steven Crowder is literally an anti-masker and a fucking anti-lockdown guy now talking about how damaging COVID is to the American public and how irresponsible Rachel Maddow was. In the same fucking convo. How can you be a fucking... How can you literally be an anti-vaxxer? Like, the, the contradiction is so obvious. It makes no fucking sense. How can you fucking literally be a Stephen Carter fan and go, Yeah, that's right. Yeah, actually, uh, Rachel Maddow did create a, a false sense of uh, confidence in people who were vaccinated. They were the real ones who were spreading COVID. How? How? Far more people than people like myself, Gerald, Dave, Joe Rogan saying, you know what? We don't have all the info yet. What? But, but you were never. <clears throat> but you were never pro lockdowns. You were literally an anti masker and anti anti lockdowns. What the fuck? Steven Crowder is literally making it seem like up in the uh, uh, in this first six minutes of this video. Steven Crowder is making it seem like he was pro lockdowns and he was just skeptical of the vaccines. What the fuck? I mean, look, look at this. Let's look up Steven Crowder anti lockdown. YouTube removes Steven Crowder video for violating COVID policy. Are you fucking kidding me, Bloomberg? I will never fucking. Fuck! Seventeen months, has boggies, has boggies, hassle, hassle, hassle. Not the racist one. Fucking Christ! I just I hate it. I hate it so much. 
I hate fucking paywall so much. I, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm going to lose it. I'm going to fucking lose it, dude. No, JavaScript can't kill that because what ends up happening is what ends up happening here is that Wait, what? The FBI is 764 pages on second thought? Finally got a response to my FOIA request. 764 pages on little old me. This should make for an interesting video. Okay, now I want to know how many pages the FBI has on me. What the fuck? I don't want to know. Please do not Freedom of Information Act request me, please. Fourteen months. Love the egg watch today. Hopefully I'll find out soon. This letter was just saying them, hey, we have your files. Do you still want them? Oh my God. <sighs> At Hassan Abbey, you are a good guy and your socialist perspective is valuable for normalizing socialism in the US. Hassel. Love you, Hassan. I mean, here, dude, here, here you go. Here, 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 here. I mean, just so I this went alone. down to uh, an area of South Dallas. Uh vaccinated. Like, he literally did a video called, Why Are You Still Wearing a Mask? We covered it earlier on the show. Where we covered it earlier on the show, like, la uh, when he first made this. And this woman actually fucking destroys him, too. Six months later and 100,000 channel points with nothing to speak. YouTube said it removed a video uploaded by conservative commentator Stephen Crowder uh, because what did he, the discussion which claimed it would uncover the lies about COVID and the liars who told them had amassed more than half a million views before it was pulled. YouTube has tried to balance the need for, okay, video was flagged by its enforcement system. It was uploaded and blocked from running ads, so Crowder didn't make money from it. The company's previously purged pages. Uh, uh, why won't it say what they said? Oh, um, because they said that the death rates of COVID are less severe or equally as severe as a common cold or seasonal flu. Hassle. So he, he, under, uh, he, he understated the, the impact, which is a lie, by the way. He, uh, he just totally fucking lied about the impact of COVID. He also was an anti-masker. So, um, and I know he's anti-lockdown. So why the fuck is he now acting like, uh, you know, Rachel Maddow was letting people go out uh, and, and fucking die? You can't do that, all right? I mean, or I guess he can, but how the fuck does no one recognize that? His entire audience is like, wait a minute, COVID is not real, though. What's more dangerous? Uh, genuinely, I want you guys to comment. Do you guys see how, how dangerous that is, the false sense of security throughout all of this? The vaccines are coming. We're going to open back up. Yeah. The vaccines don't let you catch the virus. The vaccines don't let you spread the virus. The vaccines, what she just said, they stop the virus. No more variants. Well, that hasn't happened. So at a certain point, you have to look at it and say, all right, you've blamed all of this on the unvaccinated, but that's no longer the issue. Yeah. Could it be the vaccine? I, I don't think that he even broke any of their rules. So it was... It was uh, announced yesterday that Spotify would have these warnings. I don't think they've gone into practice yet, but this is from Spotify's website, Dangerous Content. 
and they have COVID down here. Content that promotes dangerous, false, or dangerous, deceptive medical information that may cause offline harm or poses a direct threat to public health includes but may not be limited to, and I don't think he's broken any of these, asserting that AIDS, COVID-19, cancer, other serious uh, life-threatening diseases are hoax or not real, encouraging the consumption of bleach, um, and it'll cure various illnesses and diseases, promoting or suggesting that vaccines approved by local health authorities are designed to cause death, what? Encouraging people to purposely get infected with COVID-19 in order to build My immunity to it. Um, so it says it may not be limited to, so they're kind of hedging it there. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, of course they're hedging it because you fucking dumbasses consistently figure out new ways of lying. That's why. Like, what? I don't understand. Like, the reason why these fucking uh, websites have to come up with like a, a term service is vague is because like anti-vaxxers literally come up with new shit like on a daily basis they're super creative super fucking creative when it comes to like new ways of lying about how the vaccines are going to fucking murder you please yeah. do with youtube they say or uh, anything else that we think right so, same same playbook are they going to pull my show uh, aids is fake drink bleach <laughs> yes <laughs> i would go with the different you were banging on all cylinders oh what the fuck dick four with the 50 big ones. Oh, man. But it's so well, clear, just the politics of that. Yeah. Encouraging. Don, this, the implication there is, just like Donald Trump praised white supremacist Nazis, he never did. He never told anybody to drink cool. bleach. And by the way, that's not even, you guys haven't even agreed upon the right lie. Because some people are saying that he told you to inject bleach. And then some of the people will say, oh, they're telling you to drink bleach. None of it is true. You know that it's a bunch of human yeah. resources people writing that up so that they can ban people with a point of view. Go ahead, Dave. Wait, what? Donald Trump did say that, though. He was like... Scientists need to look into this bleach thing. <laughs> Didn't he? What was... Dude, Donald Trump had the best fucking ideas, man. I really... I really miss him. Yeah, but also, the idea of uh, putting a warning... Yeah, he said stand in the sun to sanitize. That was pretty cool. On this, Just like the parental advisory warning but that they decided to put on <laughs> CDs like Tipper Gore, that doesn't make kids not want to listen to it no, or watch it. No, it's the other way around. Exactly. You look for the ones with the parental warning. Like, it, ooh, that It was the fun. greatest yeah, sales... Of interesting to check that so that you're going to have to... Right ...inside the body, you can, which you can do either... Th Supposing we hit the body... With a tremendous, uh, whether it's ultraviolet or just very powerful light. And I think you said that has him in check, but you're going to test it. And then I said, supposing you brought the light inside the body, you can, which you can do either through the skin or uh, in some other way. And I think you said you're going to test that, too. Sounds interesting. Right. And then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out. In a minute. Dude, do you guys remember this? Like, we used to fucking watch these every day. How crazy. We would just, like, sit around and watch this shit every day. And he was just like... 31 months. Wow. You had this dumbass straight up just being like, come on, you know? Inject me with the light inside of my body. Maybe put a disinfectant in there. One minute. And is there a way we can do something like that? Uh, by... That's awesome. Injection inside or, or almost a cleaning. Because you see it gets on the lungs and it... There's a tremendous number of the lungs, so it'd be interesting to check that. So that you're going to have to use medical doctors with. But it sounds it sounds interesting to me. The new headline is Trump asks people to go outside. That's dangerous. Here we go. Same old group. Uh, you ready? I hope people enjoy the sun. Radicalization. It's been radical. Fucking king, dude. King shit. <laughs> I mean, nothing. Well, made, even, I don't know if that's the case uh, anymore, though. When Carlin had the CD that came out, it was just his face over the parental advisory label. Right. No, I think it is <laughs> yeah. the case. I, I don't know what's the case with today's generation. Well, a lot of I young think... kids like to virtue signal. And think about it. You have anti fascists, for crying out loud, yeah. supporting mandates. You have rage against the machine demanding that unvaccinated people be quarantined and locked down. I don't know if it's the same with well, I here. put Rachel Maddow, please stay out of my bird feeder every morning, and she's there every morning. Well, okay. <laughs> she's a contrarian. That big uh, will eat so much bird feed. I know. I love the look on her face, by the way. It's not going to hop around <laughs> and get to, like, other variants that become more... Can you imagine, dude? Like, it's anti-fascist supporting fucking public health measures? What the fuck? That's so stupid. Everybody knows. Everybody knows it's quite literally fascism when you have drunk driving laws. It, it's so fucked up. Obviously, all laws are bad, okay, and immoral. Duh. Uh, so dumb. So dumb, so stupid. Ugh, hate it.
virulent. And I'm like, oh, gosh, <laughs> like that just did not. But now it would be considered misinformation if you say, hey, why are there more variants now when there are more people vaccinated than ever? Why are there some doctors and why are there some published papers saying, hey, you know what? If you have a vaccine that isn't or an mRNA injection that isn't entirely effective, that viruses mutate and learn to learn to basically get through yeah. uh, the holes in the defense mechanisms. This is I'm not saying that this is accurate. I'm saying that Doctors are afraid to even discuss it now because that could be removed as misinformation today, even if we find out tomorrow that it's correct. Yeah. Mi a question can't be misinformation. Yeah. Right. I mean, it can if you're like Jesse Ventura, where it's like, I don't know, <laughs> was, was George W. Bush behind Tower Set? Wait, did he just say doctors are afraid? <laughs> Wait, doctors are afraid to ask questions? Like... Like, doctors are afraid of, of doing scientific research on whether or not there are breakthrough cases. Is that what he just said? I didn't misunderstand. Afraid to even discuss it now because that could be removed as misinformation today, even if we find out tomorrow that it's correct. Yeah. Mi a question can't be misinformation. Yeah. Right. I mean, it can if you're like Jesse Ventura, where it's like, I don't know, was, <laughs> was George W. Bush behind Tower 7 with an Acme plunger and the Saudi prince? I'm just asking questions. Well, all right, well, point taken. Yes. But, <laughs> but I agree with far. your sentiment. It's a leading <laughs> question. Well, here's something else that matters. Yeah, Follow the money. Lead the way. Down. Wait, but so he, he does recognize that, like, that's exactly what people do, by the way, is the leading questions, uh, like leading uh, uh, questions like that in an effort to not to really ask questions, but to just spread misinformation. Cool. Yes, I yes. get it. Follow the money. Uh, so Joni or Mitchell and Neil Young's music, they're owned by uh, Warner Music. Yeah. Okay. BlackRock holds a 1.39% uh, stake in Warner Music. And of course, BlackRock, Elizabeth Warren deemed too big to fail. They right. also have a bunch of real estate holdings that are worth trillions of dollars. I don't know what the number is today. Uh, and they hold a lot of sway over it. There is no more powerful entity right now as far as business interests. When people talk about, ooh, corporate oligarchy, man, look at BlackRock, look at Elizabeth Warren wanting them to be too big to fail. Look at their ownership here with Warner Brothers Music. Okay, shouldn't sound like a lot, 1.39. That's $74 million dollars. Of oh. Spotify. Now, if you don't remember, 2008. Warner Music, yeah. What did I say? Spotify, yeah. Oh, Warner. well, I'm going to get to that in a second, Spotify too. in a minute, yeah. <laughs> well, it does. Pretty and slip, foreshadowing. It works. does explain why two people as high as Neil Young and Rogan <laughs> can't find common ground all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> remember they used to tell us people who get high. Wait, it's BlackRock that's actually pushing the COVID misinformation um, off the airwaves? Is that what he's saying? I, I will never understand why I will never understand why Steven Crowder even brings up like BlackRock and shit when he's such a corporate dick sucker. Like it doesn't make any sense. He is quite literally a dog to mega corporations. So why are you even talking about BlackRock in any way? Like you're not, I hate when conservatives do this, when they're like, uh huh. I fucking hate, oh, dude, like, oh, man, BlackRock, BlackRock is doing this. It's like, okay, what do you think BlackRock likes more, man? What do you think they, what do you think BlackRock is more in favor of? The fucking tax cuts and deregulation that you advocate for on a regular basis? Or people not fucking taking the vaccine? Like, Steven Crowder quite literally, quite literally advocates for everything that, like, people at BlackRock would make money off of, and then turns around and goes, oh, man, that's really fucked up uh, that they're, you know, taking a stance against COVID vaccines, or taking a stance for COVID vaccines and, and, and against COVID misinformation. No, Blackwater is a separate company. BlackRock is just uh, private equity.
Hey, they yeah. never they never fight. It's always drunk people. It's like, eh, they fight sometimes. Yeah, not well, really not Rogan, just Neil Young out of nowhere for some reason. Yeah. Oh, weird. Yeah. I wonder what the... Oh, right, he's owned. Yes. Except when I saw him live, though, he sang an anti-Starbucks song, but this is totally acceptable. Right, yeah, no, exactly. He wants... Starbucks is not even a fraction of what right. BlackRock no. is. <laughs> right. <laughs> Now I'm singing for the Black Rock Girl. Starbucks is bad. (laughs) (laughs) Wait. They're saying... They're saying Neil Young personally had to take this decision because Black Rock? What a fucking insane stretch. So what about all the other Warner music people, dude? Is Neil Young and fucking Jody Mitchell the only two Warner music artists? You dumb bitch. What kind of fucking argument is this? Are you stupid? Because BlackRock owns 1% of Warner Music that only two fucking artists from Warner Music pulled their music off of Spotify? That is the dumbest... I've literally never heard a dumber argument. Even if we were to assume that like BlackRock's 1% in Warner Music is important enough for them to like urge Warner Music to go out and take action on behalf of BlackRock's ultimate interest of vaccinating everyone, I guess. Why is no one else from Warner Music also uh, pulling their music? What? What? Like, th- this doesn't make sense. It, it And BlackRock owns everything. BlackRock probably owns... How, what percentage of fucking Spotify does BlackRock own? I want to look that up. Like, why wouldn't they just go to Spotify directly? Like, there's no shot BlackRock doesn't own a piece of Spotify, too. I'd be surprised. Hey, you're... BlackRock owns Spotify. Oh, sorry. Blackstone is private equity. BlackRock is the investment managing company. Largest quarterly institutional transactions from Spotify. Oh, 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 what? What? Would you look at that? Would you look at that? Why did they have to go the long way? Why didn't they just go directly to Spotify? Which is exactly, nearly the same exact fucking number, the same exact percentage. Oh man, that's crazy. We're really uncovering a lot of conspiracies here today, dude. Why'd they have to go to Warner Music and, like, do it through Neil Young? Look at the total value. He was talking about $74 million of, of uh, uh, shares that BlackRock owns in fucking Warner Music when they just own fucking way more value in $600 million worth of value in Spotify. So what's up? Second what a brilliant, what a brilliant argument they put together, by the way. Dude, it's awesome. I love, I love how fucking, I love how conservative arguments are built with ticker tape, okay? They're basically built with like shoestrings. And they're so fragile that you can destroy it in its entirety with one fucking Google, dude. With, like, one Google search result. 
in the right direction and it, it just like immediately falls apart. So 2008, BlackRock CEO Larry Fink, that's an asshole name, he said that BlackRock would punish companies that aren't, quote, woke enough. He said to prosper over time, every company must not only deliver financial performance, that's what a company should do, but also show how it can make a positive contribution to society. And this, of course, was with a liberal uh, woke angle. Just last week, BlackRock punished 53 companies for, quote, climate inaction. Wow. Climate inaction. What does punished mean? I, I don't. I don't know that I want to find out. Yeah, can we find out exactly what the punishment was? Probably some kind of fine or some stern talking to. Did they do like an admonishment thing where they're like, oh, admonish. I love I, how the UN doesn't punish. Okay, first of all, that's just bullshit woke pandering. That BlackRock, which is a hyper-capitalist institution, is trying to do. Right? It's just a PR stunt. But... So you're already admitting that they don't fucking care. Like, why are you, then why are you bringing it up? Why are you bringing up the fact that they don't care and they're just fake caring? Immediately after you said they care so much that they would go to Warner and say, Warner Music, make sure Neil Young pulls his music out of Spotify. But which one is it? Is it that they don't care or they care so much? I don't understand. What is it? North Korea when yeah, they're yeah. launching rockets like the 4th of July. But if a company doesn't do a, you know, uh, use a tree, plant a tree bin, right. they're going to be punished by this powerful corporation. Daddy BlackRock. Had That's hilarious. To assume that... Okay. I don't... I've been, I've been Googling so much today, but it's pretty funny to think that North Korea's carbon footprint is even remotely comparable. Like, as an entire nation, remotely comparable to, like, I don't know, the entire state of Arkansas, just their fucking yearly uh, electricity uh, consumption for their fridges. Okay? If I was being honest, uh, I mean, not nah, if I was being honest. If, 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 honestly, if we were to look this up, I'm willing to bet that Arkansas and their yearly energy consumption for their fridges alone is probably fucking higher than North Korea's entire country. Uh, and their uh, uh, carbon footprint and energy consumption yearly. They're too poor. Just the fridges is a stretch? No. You're so wrong. Dude, what the fuck are you talking about? There's parts of North Korea that just simply don't have electricity. What are you talking about? Dude. Um, the, the consumption of an average American's fridge is like higher than entire nations some, uh, sometimes. Like the annual consumption. Wait, not na uh, not nations, but like, yeah. Here, there it is. My old refrigerator used more electricity than three point three billion people. The specification sheet claimed the machine would use six hundred and sixteen kilowatts per year. My kitchen refrigerator versus versus the world. Today, about 1.2 billion people live in places where per capita electricity use is less than 400 kilowatt hours per year. In sub-Saharan Africa, average consumption is 486 kilowatts per uh, uh, 80, 486 kilowatt hours per capita per year. In Nigeria, the most populous country in Africa, the average is just 145 kilowatt uh, hours per capita per year. Love this community. DC is in literally Washington City. 
has over three times the amount of emissions that North Korea does. Yeah, there you go. Y'all are fucking idiotic for... That's why I was yelling at Jordan Peterson for saying everyone needs to be rich in order to combat climate change. Like, he, he's just straight up fucking wrong on that. Like, absolutely. No one has been more wrong than Jordan Peterson when he said that. Them pick a switch from a tree. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty, well, they wrote a stern well, letter, Stephen. Yes. Yeah. Signed by all people right there. The now, world. this is to go back to your point. Do you know who else? Uh, uh, BlackRock. BlackRock owns a huge share in Spotify. Is he going to mention Spotify? Spotify. Oh, what? Spotify. What? They own 1.37 or about 611 million worth of stock in Spotify. Wow. Now, here's the thing. Think about that because so why do they go through Neil Young? He just owned himself. Why do they go through Neil Young and through Warner then? talked about how Joe Rogan, all this money, and he's dangerous, right? This is, this is everywhere on social media. Joe Rogan's dangerous because he has this money and he's unaccountable. Joe Rogan got, I think it was a $100 million deal with Spotify, but then he also got some stock options, so let's call it anywhere between 150 to $200 something million, right? Yeah. That's still a drop in the bucket compared to $611 million from BlackRock, who also have a conflict of interest because they have ownership stakes in other music production companies. This is something that is very dangerous. Now, if I were Joe Rogan at this point, if they start slapping label, keep in mind, Wait, they asked Rogan. Did you just say it's a conflict of interest for an investment firm to own uh, stakes in competing companies? What? Half a year of giving you my lunch money. Dude, I'm a fucking idiotic socialist himbo who doesn't own a credit card. How the fuck do I know more about capitalism than this fucking dingus who claims to be the number one stan of capitalism? Started watching you through Philip DeFranco. Do you you have to be like show? exceptionally you stupid to something? not recognize the things you say. Motherfucker said, hedging, unethical. Diversifying your portfolio, conflict of interest. <laughs> and, you know, to remove 40-something episodes, which he did. Keep in mind that Spotify has had problems. Their employees threatened to walk out with Joe Rogan. Multiple and now times. they're issuing these warnings. It, it wouldn't be beyond the realm of possibility and legally probably defensible if Joe Rogan said, all right, took his ball. And walked. He's the most valuable on-air commodity to Spotify, certainly. And BlackRock, BlackRock thinks they have more sway because $611 million, right, in shares that they have in, uh, in Spotify. But if Joe Rogan says, okay, I came over here because YouTube was being, uh, you know, they were censoring me too much. The premise was that Spotify would be free and open. They wouldn't bother me and tell me what to say. Bro, now you're literally a fucking, you're the dumbest person in America if you think Joe Rogan actually moved to Spotify, not because of $100 million, but because, like, they were censoring him. Like, you're actually the stupidest person in America. Like, yeah, dude. The $100 million was just, you know, icing on the fucking cake, I guess. Jesus Christ. It's becoming too constraining. Now it's too much of a headache. I'm going to walk and go do my own thing somewhere else. Sue me. Guess what? Could be breach, and there might not be anything that Spotify can do about it because they have changed the terms. I don't know the exact contract, but I don't think, at least in the court of public opinion, Spotify would be in trouble. You're playing with fire, Spotify. This is the disconnect between the woke companies who pull the strings and the woke people who work in your offices and the people who listen to Spotify. When they right. keep talking about all the money that he has, he's bringing in this money through his entertainment that he's getting a percentage of. Right. That's it's completely legitimate what he's earning. Of course. These people going at them is a completely different narrative and a completely different idea than what he's doing. Yeah, well, I mean, well, Barry Manilow has earned Spotify a pretty penny. And by that, I mean one uh, pretty penny. It was pretty shiny, though. <laughs> he framed it, yeah. It came right out of a loafer. <laughs> yeah. yeah the, the punishment, by the way, would have to do with uh, affecting those companies' voting action in the fund. And, and BlackRock is worth $9.46 trillion. $9.46 trillion. Is that assets under management, basically, yeah. for BlackRock? So. Wow. Yeah. That is insane. Ass hats. Well, the good news is- but I don't get it. Like, this is what you want. I mean, fuck BlackRock, but this is what you fucking want. I don't understand. Why are you acting like this is not what you want? This is what you advocate for every fucking day.
I don't understand why they're like, dude, conservatives like doing populist anti corporatist messaging is so funny to me because it's like, dude, you straight up love that. You, you want to suck BlackRock for everything it has. Is Elizabeth Warren, right? The socialist folks, they're looking yeah, out for yeah, you yeah. because they want BlackRock to be too big to fail, which means they can continue acting like this. And when they bankrupt companies or when they have the next crash, you get to bail them out with your tax dollars because yeah. they're too big to fail. Looking out for you. Hey, by the way, as much as I hate them, this show is available on Spotify. So please <laughs> subscribe on Spotify, on Apple, on Android, anywhere that you get your podcasts. Because again, if you're So the BlackRock conspiracy is that this gigantic uh, company that owns like, uh, you know, millions and millions, hundreds of millions of dollars in, in stakes uh, or in shares in pretty much every fucking co uh, company is uh, actually uh, secretly like woke. Okay, and that's why they are using their influence over Spotify to make you subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime on the Hasanabi broadcast in order to avoid the top of the hour ad break.